Hello and welcome to today's quick video about your first invoice. This is a demo installation um, where I only added a couple of timesheet records to demonstrate that functionality. When you click on the invoice menu for the very first time you will see this form coming up which tells you that you should create your first invoice template. Let's do that. An invoice template configures how your invoice will be rendered. Um, you can give it a name, which we'll do right here. This is only for the internal usage. Um, you'll see that later. This is the title which will appear on your invoice document. Now we are key my organization. Um, for the customers, at least in Europe, you will enter your VET ID here. This is where you enter your whole address. Um, depending on the invoice template, this it will be either multiple lines or just one line. It completely depends on the template you are using. So what we're going to do here is enter a short address and um, you can basically here you can enter any sentence you want. It will show up in the free text part of the invoice um, like things for being being a great customer um, this is where um, your customer will pay the money to now I know that not all countries are using bank accounts or bank transfer for payment mm, simply put put in here what you are going to use for a payment if you're using PayPal, then probably you'll enter your PayPal name or whatever you um, you want to let your customer know where the money should go. So I'll do it like that. This is please any donation. Put it here. Um, this is the payment terms in days. I always use two weeks. And the tax rate will later be applied onto the amount of uh, that is calculated by the timesheet records. So here in Austria, we have twenty percent tax rate. And you can select the language of the translations inside the invoice document. This does not work in Excel or Open Office documents. Uh, it works in PDFs and HTML documents. So I'm going to choose English right here. And um, this is the output format. So you can generate docx documents. You can use, um, create documents in, in a format which is usable by other programs. Um, most of the time you probably want to use PDF though because it cannot be changed any anymore afterwards, which is good for legal reasons. Mm, I'm choosing the invoice document, which is a default one. Some calculation is how your how the contents of your invoice will be rendered. So here is this invoice type will display one row per time sheet record. Um, you can probably you can group them by activity. You can group them per project. Um, it's up to you. There are a couple of choices which you have. You you could group them by week. Whatever you're going to use, select it here. I'm using the default one for now. <laughs> Leave the invoice number generator as is f f for this time now, and hit save. So we created the first invoice template, which can now be used to create your first invoice. 
if we're now going back to invoices and search for all available items for this month we'll see i created some some setups with three customers and a couple of timesheet records which annoyingly don't have any money applied so i'm going to do that right now using the batch update mode and simply setting an hourly rate of 100. Going back to invoices now and we'll see and the search was already executed because it was saved in, in between. Um, you see the total price for that customer including the tax. We can now preview the invoice document or we can save it. What is important now to know th is this little checkbox up here. If you are going to hit save this is important that depending on your workflow but most people want to use it this checkbox is really um, checked. All the timesheet records which are included in this invoice when you hit save will be marked as exported and they won't show up, show up in the next search so if we do that now we'll see that there's uh, an invoice created this is the invoice listing page if you go back the search will be executed again automatically and you will see there are only two invoices left for this month If you don't hit that checkbox and we create the invoice for the demo customer, you'll see it was created, the invoice was created with that invoice number, payment target and so on. But it still shows up here. So this is important. It is important that you either use this mark as exported button or have any other workflow in place that you don't create invoices twice for the same customer. So basically when, when I'm doing my monthly invoice day, I'm always hitting every available button here and making sure that nothing is left. So after creating invoices for every customer oh, we should remember to hit that button you'll see nothing is left okay when we go back to the invoices we created two invoices twice so I'm going to cancel those invoices by hitting the cancel invoice button. You see it, the status changed to canceled. The invoice number though is still in use. It won't be freed up after canceling the invoice. Okay, now you see you have three pending invoices and you can download the documents by clicking on the row. And after sending the email to your customer, you hit the waiting for payment action, which moves it to the pending state. And now assume it's two weeks later, you checked your bank account and you saw that the invoice was paid. You can switch the status again and say, invoice was paid on the second. Perfect. And this is good. If um, today is later than the payment target date, this row will be marked red. So you directly see which invoices are still waiting for payment. Okay, this was um, today's lesson about creating your first invoice and um, 
yeah, using the invoice feature of Kimai. Thanks for listening and we'll see us next time. Bye.